So, um, did you catch me on Channel 4? Do you know my work? Yes. Brace yourselves. I'm intrigued. I'm going to bring our text back. Don't worry about you. I want a lovely contemporary kitchen in an old space, but the old space is biting back. I love it. Big job, isn't it, a kitchen? Very big job. Let me give you a tour. So now changing rooms is finally aired. I can give you a tour of my place, talk you through the filming process, and if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll even tell you how I got on the show. So all the secrets out, I was on Changing Rooms, which is a renovation show hosted by Lawrence Dewell and Bowen and Winnie Williams. Changing Rooms used to be on BBC back in the day, but now Channel 4 have taken it over, given it a revamp, and now it's a new show. With the same premise, two teams, swap houses, you decorate. The filming process was super interesting, especially for someone of my nature. There were cameras being thrown around such as Sony FX6s, A7s, there were DJI Ronins on tap, lenses on lenses on lenses, and glass on glass on glass. I was genuinely in my element. I've never seen so much gear in one place. Like, whenever I wasn't actually on camera, I was talking with the crew about what cameras they were using, why they were using that camera, why they had this lens on for this shot, why they had th Learning from the best. I mean, what better way to learn? Seeing everything come together, that's like something that I aspire to be a part of one day. Seeing the whole production in person was so cool. See, I'd already heard of Lawrence before due to seeing him on other programs and stuff, and also from his cheeky appearance in a Max Wash video. One of them being a very famous person. She just come out and told me that her dad is a celebrity, a man called Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. Whenever I think of you, I'm gonna think of temporary erection. Ah, oh, sir, that is very kind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, please, carry on, carry on. <laughs> Thank you. you have my blessing. Shout out Max Wash for the support. I have to say as well, massive shout out to Lawrence. If anyone ever asked him for a picture, he'd not even hesitate to get the picture. And of course, I took the picture. We actually stayed on the same side of the hotel as Lawrence. One night after a few drinks in the hotel bar, we were making our way back upstairs. On the stairs, we actually bumped into Lawrence. And um, yeah, we just sort of had a chat with him and had a slow walk back to our rooms. But I'd never actually heard of Winnie before, which made me all the more like intrigued as to her design taste, her ideas, what she'd bring. On the evenings when um, all the filming had finished for the day, we'd all meet up, us, all the crew, all the cameramen, all the workers, we'd all meet up in the hotel bar and we'd just have a few drinks and chat. For me personally, this is probably one of my favourite parts. You didn't have to be so serious. You could just chat to people, does that make sense? So I'd be sitting with the camera operators, chatting about their next projects, my current projects, talking about how they even got onto this job. Everyone was just so like happy to talk about what they were doing. And because I'm a creative and a photographer as well, I feel like we sort of found that level. We could sort of talk about gear and talk about what we were doing and just sort of nerd out. Which I mean, who doesn't love nerding out about something they're passionate about? Over? Especially with some of the industry's finest. Also, massive, massive shout out to our welfare officer. Always making sure we have what we needed. Always available for a chat, a phone call, a text, whatever. And the builders and the workers, of course. Massive part to the show. So there were workers there who had also worked on DIY SOS. And there were also workers there who had obviously worked on the previous season of Changing Rooms. Shout out Tibby's mum for the tea. Like, the workers, yeah, they would literally start work on the renovations at 7 a.m. and finish at 4 a.m. Like, I might be on screen, yeah, but they deserve all the props. There'd be like, literally like 50 or 60 of us just in the hotel bar, pints everywhere, all talking about Channel 4 all talking about TV shows. Um, it was, yeah, it was quite a surreal experience, but my motivation for work was off the wall after this. Having them chats with them industry people and actually speaking to people that are in the position where I want to get to eventually one day, or not necessarily where I want to get to, but it's something I want to do in my career. Having that inside knowledge was a dream. The whole set as well, like not just the set where they were filming in the house and on the location and stuff, like the set where everything would be stored, the area where people would chill out, the area where the hosts would sit in their trailers, the production village. It was massive. We literally took over an entire car park and it's one of them things as well like I'd always wanted to see a production village. A production village is basically a bunch of tents that's set up where you can walk around. Each tent's got a different thing to do. The crew, after filming, would go and sit in the production village waiting upon the next scene 
or get a coffee or get some food. And also, the reactions when we saw the renovations, they were completely legit. I feel like there might be some people out there that, are, that sort of doubt the reactions, like, ah, oh, no, nah, they'd have seen it before, they'd have come in and acted it. Like, if there, was, there was obviously, we had multiple takes, but the reaction was genuine. I had not a clue. I walked in here and it was like a walking into a different house. It was crazy. It was a, um, it was a very, very organized chaos, but it went perfectly. Now, for the bit I'm guessing you've been waiting for. How did I actually get on TV? Well, I didn't apply. I didn't ask or register anywhere. They asked me. So I was out on a walk and I got an email. And the subject heading of that email was something like Channel 4 Changing Rooms. So I was a bit like, all right, let's have a look. So I had a quick scan of the email and it read somewhere along the lines of, I'm not reading out the email word for word, I'll just read out a basis of what it says. Hi Christian, I came across your Instagram account and can see that you've been photographing the local community in Yorkshire and therefore wondered if this would be something you would be interested in. If you could spread the word about the show in one of your social media posts or your weekly email newsletter, that would be amazing. Honestly, kind of shrugged it off as spam. But later on that evening, I revisited the email and I took a look at the email address and I googled the email address and the email address was legit. The person was legit. It's safe to say I was a little bit gassed. One thing led to another. Uh, we exchanged a few emails, a few phone calls, and boom! All I had to do now was assemble a team together, figure out which rooms I actually wanted renovating, and the rest is history. I genuinely cannot thank everyone enough. The, the director of the company who actually produces change rooms actually bought a Bronte Country 2022 calendar. Like, madness. If you were to take something away from this story, I'd say the moral is, just keep doing what you're doing. Every single day I post on social media, sometimes it feels so repetitive. It can feel like you're going round and round in circles and genuinely getting nowhere. But if I didn't keep posting day after day after day, feeling like it wasn't doing anything, feeling like no one was seeing anything, they would have never even thought about me being on the show. This wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. So massive, massive appreciation for you. So keep doing what you're doing because you never know who's on the other end of the screen. You don't know who's scrolling past your pictures. So keep posting, keep doing that thing you wanna do because I promise one day something will come from it. No matter how big or small, just keep doing it because something will come from it. Subscribe if you're new here, hit that like button to tick off the YouTube algorithm and thanks for watching. Did you, did you subscribe? Sorry, I thought you were gonna click off then without subscribing.